This program is brought to you by Town Billiards. Too fast, too fly, too flaunty, too gas, too high, yeah, we own it. We go wherever the crew going. I'm ready, so tell me who want it. Evening. It all comes down to this then on Free Sports. It's the Super Series Final. We've had 14 matches over the course of the last couple of months and now we are down to just two men left standing as Gareth Hibbert takes on Alex O'Donoghue here tonight. Stephen Jameson here with you as I have been throughout the whole competition alongside Simon Webb. Simon, lovely to have you with us once again. How excited are you to be at this stage of the competition? It's been a long time coming and at last we've got, we've got our final. I uh, can't wait. It's, I'm so excited. We've seen a brilliant event so far. We've seen so much drama and I can't wait to see what's going to happen tonight. It's been an interesting competition for both of these men. We've had interesting performances from both. We've probably seen the performance of the tournament from Gareth Hibbert, but in Alex O'Donoghue, we've got a man who's taken out maybe the two favourites for this entire competition. Absolutely. Alex probably came into the event a little bit more under the radar, but what he's done in, throughout the event has been very impressive, taking out Mark Farnsworth and Jordan Shepard, two favourites at the time. Uh, very impressive. And for me, he's played his best pool when the pressure's really been on at the back end of matches. He's been behind and he's found his best form. What does Alex have to do to win this match against Gareth? Just has to take his chances. He has to just play the same way that he's been playing throughout the event. You know, if he makes a mistake, just write it off, get on with the next opportunity. And if he takes his chances, he's got every chance of walking away with the prize tonight. And for Gareth, who probably walks into this as, as the favourite here tonight, he wasn't quite his best in his last game, but the round before that, he put in a performance that was as good as you can get. Absolutely. That was breathtaking. Back to his 2016 world title form. Uh, a brilliant performance to knock out the current world champion. And if he plays anywhere near like that tonight, then he's going to be a big favourite. But time will tell. It's been a fantastic competition and we are down to our final. We hope you're excited for this one. Let's find out if our players are. Simon caught up with them earlier. Alex, first shootout event, first shootout final, first final here on Free Sports. How's that sound? Yeah, it sounds great. It's uh, such a cracking field. Great event to be involved in. Enjoyed every minute of it. Really looking forward to the final. Gareth, first shootout event, first shootout final. How excited to, to be in this final? Oh, I'm delighted, yeah. It's, it's been a long wait because the tournament started quite a while ago. But yeah, I've enjoyed all three matches I've played. I've enjoyed watching the other games that I've seen. It's, it's been a really good tournament. What would, have you allowed yourself to look forward? What would winning mean to you? Where would it rank? Uh, I think, obviously, because the, the long format, the strength of the field, I think you've got three former world champions in there. Sheppi, who's got a great record in the, in the format. Yeah, it's going to mean a lot if, if I can get over the line, definitely. You've had a huge amount of success in your career, you know, world titles and um, been in so many big events, so many big finals. How does this compare? It's different because of the format. Is you sort of have to accept that you're going to make mistakes when the clock's winding down and you might go the wrong way about finishes because you don't have time to, to map things out the same. But you just have to take it on the chin and uh, if you do make a mistake, try and forget it as soon as possible. But it's been a great event and uh, I've enjoyed it. And anything on live TV is massive for pool, So One of the, the things that's been obvious to us is that the way you've managed to deal with not just the, the shot clock but also the set clock. Has that been easy? Has that been natural? Because it would be the first time you've experienced that? Uh, it's not. It's. I think I'm. I'm quite a quick thinker anyway. So I don't really think it has had a massive effect on me. It's caught me out a couple of times at that first point where it goes to 15 seconds. But no, I think it's just natural for me to be honest. I'm fine with it. How would you view your form so far through the event? You were breathtaking against John. Yeah, it's been hit and miss really. I pulled out some big finishes in all the matches, but a little inconsistent in in one or two of them as well, and some bad misses. So. Yeah, I watched the semis back and I, I did play a little worse than I thought I did actually. When you, on the night you think you played pretty solid, but there was quite a few balls that I missed that, that were disappointing. So. You've found your best form late in the matches. You've been behind in, in all three matches so far. What is it that's allowed you to, to stay calm and, and find your best form at the end? I think always towards the end of matches I've always been good at knocking down, winning important frames and I've had to win them. Especially against Mark, you know, because obviously we both didn't really play very well. But when it comes down to it, I've managed to dish when I needed to get those reverse dishes in and I've always, it's always been a strength of mine yeah. And thoughts on your opponent tonight? Oh, he's been playing great yeah he's beat, he's beat three top players Mark and Jordan in the last two rounds so they Jordan is the man to beat at this format and Mark's the man to beat in any format really so yeah, he's a class player Alex. Wish you the best of luck. Thanks Simon. And thoughts on your opponent tonight? Gaz is a great player been around for you know since the late 60s uh, 
always in uh, top finals all across the country you know a lot of respect for him great to watch wish you the best of luck thanks very much well, there we hear from both players. Both of them very relaxed. Both of them, Simon, feeling very confident, I think it's, it's fair to say. It's, it's a relaxed vibe here. Both players look very relaxed in, in that interview and a little bit of needle, a little bit of banter, I should say, from Alex towards Gareth. But both players look relaxed ahead of tonight's final. Yeah, it should be an absolute cracker. Two players in fine fettle and looking to win the Super Series title. It all goes down here on this table after the break. Welcome back. We are moments away from our Super Series final here on Free Sports. Myself and Simon are back in our commentary box. And Simon, we're really excited for this one. It's been a long tournament in terms of how long it's taken to complete, but it, it's all been building up to this. And we've seen some fantastic matches through this tournament. Let's hope we end on a cracker. You made a prediction. I'm just going to bring this up in the very first uh, match of the, of the show that we had. You said there's going to be at some point in this tournament a tiebreaker. You, you're running out of matches now. You've got one left. Pretty good odds on it. I'd say these two are very, very even. It is. I couldn't call a winner. And, you know, we, we look back through the history books and you say Gareth with what he's won in the game. Gareth would start as favourite. But the way Alex has played in this event, he's already taken out the two favourites at each stage. So I really think he could go all the way. Well, Gareth has won the lag. He's going to be breaking first. Quick reminder of the rules of playing black ball rules tonight, which means a ball must hit a cushion after contact. A foul introduces a free shot and then a visit. No two shots, two shots carry or anything else that you might be used to down your local. Skill shots are allowed. It means if you're yellows, you can pot a red as long as you pot your yellow. We are playing shootout rules, which introduces the golden break. Pot the black, you win the frame. Pot the black and the white, you lose it. We're best of five sets. It's a race to five frames within each set. Each set lasts half an hour. The winner of the set will be whoever is leading at the zero mark or whoever takes five frames, whichever one comes first. We are best of five sets. It's going to be a belt set. We're underway. Gareth Hibbert makes the ball with his opening break. He'll be delighted with that. Has he got an opening shot will be his next question. White has been pushed onto the top cushion. So I don't think it's going to be an easy opening shot. But he's at the table, which is the first port of call. Step number one, he's made a ball, but that's not a nice start. Really difficult opening ball, isn't it? It's really not a lot. He wants to take something on. He wants to be aggressive, especially when you look at the layout of the table, because yellows are, are wide open. Oh, beautiful. Well, that's not a bad little start from Gareth here, but let's put it that way. That is about as tough an opening pot as you could want to take on. And he's absolutely nailed it. Great shot. Back to a 30 second shot clock. That will change halfway through the set at the 15 minute mark. It will dip to 15 seconds, which is quick. To know if Gareth was queuing well with his opening couple of shots. I think we've got our answer. He's played a really awkward one into the middle pocket and he's fired one into the bottom as well. He's, uh, he's here to play. He is, but he would have loved the white to travel two more inches. He really wanted to be on this yellow to the left centre, but if he can recover with this pot here, it's probably the best of the three from awkward queuing. So, a great start so far for. Gaz, just one more good pot to the to the corner and he should get himself into good position for the first time. Yeah, he's been chasing this. And the very first shot of the match, really. I just saw the way he came around to have a look and he's concerned about going in off the left centre if he tries to bring the white back. So he's accepting the next shot from a slightly more distance just to guarantee that he had the next shot. Gareth will be delighted to be in this position after the first couple of minutes of this match. Two dollies for a break and dish and a 1-0 lead. Perfect start from Gareth Hibbert. What a start. It's not just a breaking dish, but the first three or four balls were absolutely top.
top drawer and Gareth is up and running. He is a fixture of the free sport competitions that we've had over the last few years on the channel. It's the Masters on final on this channel a couple of years ago. 2016 IPA world champion, a really, really top quality player. He has back-to-back 147s -back in snooker to his name as well. Dab hand at darts. As long as you can play in a pub, he's probably pretty decent. Break, that is the general rule of thumb with Gareth Hibbert. It certainly is. I wouldn't want to play him at any pub sports. But as we talked to about at the start of the show, a very professional pool player. He's a professional, professional, takes it very seriously and does all the required work to make himself better. Alex is very unlucky here. Really unlucky. He talks about Gareth having the perfect start. That's the last thing that Alex would have wanted with his opening break. He just wanted a chance of his own to respond and get himself going with a, a nice table to go at. And he is very unfortunate with the way it's been kicked off in off to the corner. And compared to the chance that Gareth had in the opening frame, this is far easier, far less work involved. And look at that cue ball. It's, that's very unfortunate for, for Alex. Not the start he wanted. But as we've seen all the way through this tournament, it is a long format. There will be ebbs and flows, so there's no need to panic. It's very early in this match for, for Alex. And he's a man who's been used to being behind. I was looking at the, uh, the matches he's played, just looking at the, the record books. Yeah, behind in all, every match. Two and down in two of them, and three one down in the fourth set. That one set and a half all against Mark Farnsworth, and he found a way. He found a way to turn the matches round at the back end. Gareth's running into a little bit of trouble here. That cannon has not come out too nicely for him. I think he could still play the plant. This is The problem with this plant is you have to hit it so hard to get the, the red across the table that the white is going to be absolutely flying if he takes this on. I could see him playing a safety. No, he's going to take it on. He's played it well. <laughs> That's come out as well as he could have wished as well. He's on the next red. That's a terrific shot. He's such an aggressive player, Gareth Hibbert, and he does stuff like that so well. He's not afraid to take on the big shot, no matter how early it is in the game. He backs himself to make it one of the great shot makers in the game. Downside of the previous shot, he's not the black safe, and this positional shot isn't easy. Well, it wasn't easy and the reason he's looking frustrated is the fact that the yellow he's just cannon into has just blocked the path for the double on the black so now he's looking at what alternatives he has he'll be happy that he's in the 30 second portion of the set because he needs a bit of time to work this one out Well, he did have a look, you could see the way he was queuing, at the black off the yellow. The problem with the black off the yellow, the yellow's below the middle of the pocket. So this isn't a, an easy shot. In, he has to almost get the black moving forward like a skill shot. Oh, that's so good. That's absolutely ridiculous. He is amazing. What a start from Gareth Hibbert. That is top top quality to, to pick that angle to pick that momentum on the ball out it's it's so hard to do if the, if the uh, yellow is an inch further up the table it's it's unmissable but the yellow being where it was i just thought he was guaranteed to hit the near jaw and, and not drop but he found a way what a shot this is so good perfect start from gareth hibbert a breaking dish and a reverse dish as well. And the way he's playing, wouldn't surprise you really. And if, uh, if Alex could go 3 0 down without playing another shot, but having said that, the break hasn't come out kind for Gareth. He's not made a ball, he very nearly went in off. He didn't strike it as well as he did the last. Look at the spots on the cue ball spinning around. That shows that he's caught the break with. A lot of side spin, which he's not trying to do. Caught the front ball poorly and a poor split, and no surprise to see him come up dry. Well, Alex is at the table for his first shot in anger, really, in this 
in this game. And he's elected yellows. It's almost there for him. He's got a little bit of a problem, as you can see, on the left side of the table. But I think upon first glance it looks cluttered, but I don't think he's too far away from being able to make a, a finish hit. Just the one yellow, I th to me, it's yellow, the three in a line, you've got the yellow furthest to the left. That doesn't go to the bottom left corner. It definitely doesn't go to the left centre. Now, he could cannon into it, but you're cannoning into it towards a cluster of reds, so there's no guarantee to get that, that out. So that's his big problem. Doesn't have an angle to do anything on this next shot. I wonder whether he'll risk playing the yellow off the red. The red is a long way from the pocket, which makes that shot very risky. Won't get that far. A frustrating miss for Alex, who has been watching the table. Of course, it's been practiced on this afternoon. It's looked really good in his warm-up frames. Queuing nicely. That will be a really disappointing one. And then putting the yellows that he has, he's cleared the road really for reds, which are a lot easier than they were when the break first came out. Still the same problem though for Gareth, you see he's come around, he's having a look at the same problem area. That red and yellow, Gareth's got the ones just below it as well. He could fire into this little cluster and open things up just a fraction. So a great deal more control and it's always so hard to read the read the face of Gareth here, but he remains pretty stony throughout. He's a tough read, bit of a poker face going on. Another game he's probably a dab hand at, but I think he'll be pretty pleased with that. If he can drop this one in, and this is awkward queuing, but this is the key to the frame. Yeah, not a surprise. That was tough from awkward queuing and a stretch. Tough shot, but the way he started this match, we, we both thought he'd make it. Certainly did. Makes the difficult look easy at times. But he's left it difficult for Alex, and this is going to be tricky. Oh, I'll tell you what, that's some pot considering the one he missed last time. In terms of degrees of difficulty, that was about three times tougher than the one he missed. It's usually the way. That was every bit as good as the, the black that Gareth made in the previous frame, if not better, considering the situation of this set so far. If he misses that, he's 3-0 down and almost writing off the first set. Now he's in perfect position to close the gap a little bit. Has to leave a nice angle on his last ball to get onto the black. I was just thinking that exact same thing. And I'm not surprised to see him come down for the yellow over the bottom right for, for his next ball. Now the only problem he's got here is just making sure he comes far enough up the table so that the white's travelling down the table off the yellow to the left centre rather than straight or going up the table. And he, he does have a decent amount of margin of error. Yeah, in the way that this was set up previously without that red over the pocket. This would have been his final ball onto the back. Doesn't want to leave himself snooker, he's fine. He's played that very, very well, actually. Just needs a clean run through to the black ball on the bottom cushion, just checking the root of the white. That red, middle of the cushion, could be in his way. Yeah, he's jacking the queue up to try and avoid the red. It's not a natural. Played lovely. Perfect shot. Remember the skill shot rules, it's not a foul to pop the red. He's used that beautifully, actually. There's a holder for the white. This for 2-1. And Alex O'Donoghue is in the game. Some really high quality stuff so far. From Alex O'Donoghue and Gareth Hibbert. That's very impressive from Alex. That was far from easy. And having to come up with that big shot to get himself going in that visit was one thing but having to then finish it off he's now up and running that will settle him down this set is very much alive I just see a run there across the tournament table what a run Alex O'Donoghue has had there's no question 
He's had the toughest run of anyone in this tournament. Gav Robinson in the first round was about as tough an opponent as he could have got. And then Jordan Shepard and Mark Farnsworth quarter-final and semi-final run. That is, I mean, that is running the gauntlet in this competition if ever there was one. It certainly is, and when you consider that he's gone five sets in all three matches, he won 11 of the final 13 frames to turn around a 2-1 deficit to Gav Robinson in the first round and then he was able to turn things around against Jordan Shepard and Mark Farnsworth I think I was more impressed with the Mark Farnsworth victory because it looked like Mark had finally found his stride in that match to go 3-1 up in set number four to, to lead almost for the first time in the match and Alex responded with his best spell of ball in the tournament just making finish after finish after finish just to take it away from Mark Farnsworth I was very impressed with the way that Alex finished off that match an interesting break to kick off this frame from Alex O'Donoghue. Nearly went in off, and I think in the end he'd be pretty, pretty relieved not to, but he wasn't necessarily rewarded with an opening shot. Safety with his first. Over to you, Mr. Hibbert. What you got? A, <laughs> a nice long plant. There was a big gap between the two balls there, and it wasn't a straight plant either. That's uh, really well picked out from, from Gareth Hibbert. Alex would have known there was a chance of that shot on, but he, he also knew that was a very tough shot. Look at the gap, and it's not straight. He has to really pick out the potting angle of the second ball. And that's hard to do from that distance, and it's an excellent shot to get him going. And Well, I don't want to say the rest of the work is easy from here, because it, it, it isn't, it never is. But when you consider the shots he's played so far in this match, he, it's open for him. Yeah, back-to-back -back plants to kick off the break. It's been that sort of performance so far. Gareth Hibbert, some really high level stuff. Looking in really, really good form. He's, this is the sort of form, these opening few frames from Gareth, that he displayed in that match against John McAllister, the world champion, who he knocked out in the quarterfinals. He was unbelievable in that match. And this is the sort of display that he put in frame after frame in that encounter. He really took it away from John McAllister, who started the match brightly and looked at McEwen beautifully, the world champion, and we thought, well, this could be, you know, another great performance from, from the man who won it all in in the world championships in February, but Gareth sort of stole it away with it, just, well, I called it breathtaking in the build-up to this to this match, and it really was. Best I've seen him play in, in a number of years. You heard the noise about 30 seconds ago, and our referee... Evans indicating as well. 15 second shot clock now in operation. We are halfway through the first set here. Gareth Hibbert just needs to land on this black to take a 3 1 lead. It'll be a little bit miffed he's on the cushion, but it shouldn't affect him too much yet. 3 1. What a start. Excellent start. Really enjoyed the match so far. Both players looking. Uh, like they're going to get themselves going now. This is Alex O'Donoghue's profile. Town of Swindon, the Don. And twice a World Championship quarter finalist. Had a little bit of a break from the game a couple of years ago, and he is a well regarded player without really ever having the consistency on the tour to get himself into those higher echelons. Would that be fair to say? Absolutely. I think first time round when he first turned professional a few years ago, I think he got himself on the edge of the top 16. I'm not sure if he, if he quite jumped in there or not, but he was certainly um, very close to doing so. And this second time round, he's now just turned professional again, so he's back at the bottom of the professional rankings. But that statistic of two World Championship quarterfinals would probably surprise a few, and I even mean a few players within the game, because he's almost done that a little bit quietly and under the radar. But yeah, no, he's he's a fantastic player, and everyone knows how good a player he is within the, the full ranks. And I'm, I'm really pleased that he's showing it here now on Free Sports. Yeah, best player in Wiltshire by a country mile. So Wiltshire's former number one tells me. Not sure that's true, but it, well, the, the first part of that's true. <laughs> the, the second part certainly isn't. Alex is uh, Alex has been the top player in Wiltshire for a, for a, a number of years. And, there are some really good players in my home county coming through the ranks. 
Well, he's been given a great opportunity in this frame to take us to 3-2. Gareth with a hammer of a break, but it came up dry. And he was unlucky. Plenty of movement on the pack. You can see the split he's got. But the split that he's handed over to Alex O'Donoghue, who would have been very pleased to say thank you very much. And there's one slight problem to figure out, and that's the yellow on the centre of the balk line. We need to kiss. Oh, it's just come up short, so does that give him a shot at this ball? I don't think it goes in the corner. It, well, no, it doesn't go in the corner. Does it sneak in the middle? Oh, it does. Just. It's played it really nicely. This is now a shot that requires a bit of care. The pot is a guarantee. The white ball placement is everything here. It's a line of reds in his way. Lovely choice of shot. I was thinking he'd just try and get the white somewhere near the left centre pocket and then there'd be room to land on the black. But he's worked out that if he screws down the right-hand side of the table, he has more margin of error for the black to the centre. But he's missed it. All the hard work. Oh, such a frustra frustrating game at times. Posted a couple of brilliant shots into the middle bags on this break alone. Some really tough shots. That was simpler. That was bigger. And that was missed. And now Gareth Hibbert with a routine counter clearance. It's a big error for Alex to make there. That was his route back into this first set. 4 1 with less than 10 minutes remaining is going to be tough to come back from, even for a man with the comeback powers of Alex O'Donoghue. We've seen all the way through the event that no scoreline is comfortable for any player at any stage. And this set clock and shot clock, you always feel like your opponent could come back. It only takes half a mistake and all of a sudden you bang under it again. But that was an opportunity to really get close to Gareth. And 4-1 will feel that little bit more comfortable for him. Such a frustrating one for Alex there. Especially with the way Gareth has been playing in this opening set. Cannot afford to gift him opportunities like this. He's already having to work hard enough on his own play without having to free up chances for Gareth as well. For three, Christian advantage. Nicely done. 4 1 then for Gareth Hibbert. About nine minutes or so will be left on the watch. And we know it's possible. We've seen this exact scenario play out already in this competition. Sean Story winning four in a row to go 5 4 from this exact same position. This is Gareth's recent tournament history. Got to the semi final, the World Championships against John McAllister, where he was beaten by the eventual world champion. But in 2020 so far, he's not had the results that he would have wanted or probably indeed expected. This uh, Super Series has been a great return to form. Alex nearly in off the break, but he hasn't made a ball. And so often in this game, when it rains, it pours. So nice split the balls as well. Take reds fairly comfortably here. Red in the triangle area that goes to the bottom left. There's enough room past the yellow to get to the bottom angle, I think. It's tight, but I think it's there's room and then everything else does have a pocket. So this could be well, this is a very good opportunity for Gareth to get the first set on the board. Take the set clock out of play completely. He hasn't considered or tried to go down for the red just to the right hand side of that black. It tells me that there probably is enough room for it. Shot 
shot clock now. No longer a surprise for Gareth Hibbert. He's very used to it. That shot looked like a rush because he had to sort of take two steps and, and play the shot, but he was fully aware of what was going on and actually he played it with he was in complete control of his, his time at the EU. It was a simple shot and he didn't have to worry about queuing up properly. This is now a tough ball to land on. Doesn't go into the middle, as you can see. Just have a look to see if it went to the far corner pocket. It doesn't. It needs to land on it off this red. This is tough. It's tight. It's very tight. He looks happy enough, although you never get too much out of Gareth in terms of emotion. Well, he's playing this with a little bit of side. He just needs to turn this one over. Oh, yeah, that's so good. You can see the spot spinning. That was so much better than it looked. He is playing so, so well. Gareth Hibbert with an exhibition in our opening set of the Super Series final. Fantastic performance from him. That is as good as he's played in the tournament. Ominous signs for Alex O'Donoghue, but plenty left in this one. Second set coming up after the break. Absolutely perfect start from Gareth Hibbert. He has taken the first set of this Super Series final. Some magical shots. For a man who is very much on fire in this in this first set, he's barely missed a beat, and he's put the kind of performance in that we saw in his quarterfinal that we've described as the best of the tournament, and that's the form he's showing in this one. It was an ominous start, wasn't it? A very tough pot to the, the centre pocket, followed by a, a raking long pot and a great clearance, and he, he didn't stop all the way through the set. It was just big shot, great clearance after great clearance, and it's going to be tough for Alex. He's going to have to dust himself off, go again here in set number two, but he's done this all tournament long. He has been behind, he has fought his way back, so no panic on Alex's Second side set. just yet, but Gareth has started well. Yeah, Gareth will be particularly pleased with how he started, no doubt about that. Only a couple of errors, really, from Alex, a couple of missed pots in there. Well, that's all it takes against a player playing that well to lose the set 5-4. And Alex with the first break of the second. He's made a ball and he's going to have a start, which he'll be pleased with. A chance to get back into this match right from the get-go. His first chance of the second set is upon him. Got a couple of options on reds. He could also take yellows up to the top right, but reds look like the choice. This is exactly what he wanted and exactly what he needed. Good break, great opportunity. Get himself going, remind himself he's playing well. He's played well to get to this point. You don't have to worry about what's happening in the first set. Set play means the scoreline is irrelevant. He's just in a race to five now for set number two. All the splits to get, this one pleased him because it should be really straightforward for him. Just a chance to get the cue arm going again. Restore a little bit of confidence. Wouldn't have been pleased with how that set ended. He'd have accepted, I think, that Gareth played exceptionally well, but he'd have been annoyed to have given him some of the chances that he did. Just that one black into the centre, that was the biggest moment, really. If he makes that and it goes 3-2, it could be a different set. Maybe looking at another black into that same centre pocket off this red. Is he going to be able to come up for it into the same corner? He is. If he done just the start to this second set that Alex O'Donoghue was looking for. 1-0 to the Don in set number two. These are the recent world champions of which, of course, Gareth Hibbert is among their number. 2016, a 2-1 victory over Craig Marsh. Deciding frame as well. Great condition, Gareth Hibbert. Deciding frame of that. Deciding set. Brilliant final. We've seen some brilliant finals, especially a couple we've seen on three sports have been absolutely brilliant. There really has been some crackers. 
train. We're going to look to break the train in one mil. Second set. Time running. Feature of Gareth's play is his break. He has one of the best breaks on the tour. You can see why it is powerful. It is and it's timed well almost as guaranteed as you can be off a break to have a pretty good one but it's happened a couple of times in this match already he's not had the best first shot well if he can get through to this yellow by the right center which he can he's absolutely fine his camera angles simon they're so deceptive at times they can be this is the key shot coming up he's going to be playing this yellow it goes straight but he's going to be playing it off the probably the red there isn't much room he has to sort of feather it off the red he may play it off the yellow but it's the same shot but it's the red that's so tough because you have to you're only just flicking the red and it's so hard to judge that although he knows the way he played it it was a, a controllable shot he wasn't going to leave much on and he was going to tie up a red playing it the way he did so a comfortable choice of shot yeah, be too wounded that he's missed that shot Gareth Hibbert So Donahue got in the locker. That's your answer. It's not as if Alex has played badly so far in this match. He's had a couple of errant shots, but other than that, has looked very at home. And he's played some lovely stuff. This has been... He's had the calibre of a final so far. Alex is just eyeing up a skill shot here. I wonder if he's going to play for the skill shot to get the white going up into the top corner of the table and play a skill shot, which is tough, or whether he's trying to trying to come and play into the yellow that's over the pocket off this next shot. So he's played. He's the wrong side of it. He's unlucky. He actually played uh, the pr uh, precise position rather than playing the skill shot. He wanted to hit that yellow full in the face. And he's in a little bit of trouble here. Did have an out, but it was very much odds against that shot. And those are the margins. You know, you're talking there, what, a centimetre on the white? And that's ruined the break for Alex O'Donoghue. And now Gareth, massive favourite in this frame. No attempt at the pot from Gareth. Just nudging it over. And the reason for that is the yellow nearest the black. The red's blocking it. So he's tried to leave Alex with no shot on. All two reds tied up. So it's the odds against Gareth. The odds against Alex making a clearance from here. And now the table is wide open for Gareth. A good match play to earn the opportunity. Yeah, Alex has done all he could there and just for he had to play that ball, but he's tied up another pocket and just says over to you if you can clear it. Fair play. And the way that Gareth has been playing, you would back him. It would take a big error for Gareth not to clear up here, but this format of the game that we do see players running out of position and then feel a little bit rushed not able to recover so you'd never never feel certain yeah, never was there a finer example than in our shootout showdown match last night if you didn't catch that have a little look see on social media you'll see some clips of the finish absolutely amazing just goes to show in this format of the game it is never over until it's over can't take anything for granted everything is tough you are put under more and more pressure by the format of the tournament and all the the match having a conversation earlier Simon off air we were saying it's almost as it almost has an American sports style feel where the clock is introduced you know you think of basketball American football 
where the clock comes in, it almost forces that extra pressure, that fourth quarter drama, as it were, that happens so often in those sports. It means the last couple of minutes of so many of these sets are so dramatic and you never quite know where it's going to end up. Absolutely agree. It, it really is that match clock, the set clock, it just adds such a dynamic to the, the pressure out there for the players. Gareth Hibbert whips through that clearance in no time at all. It's one apiece in our second set. The shootout has been a brilliant competition. We've enjoyed having you on Free Sports for them. Jordan Shepard, the shootout king, has been almost unstoppable in them so far. That's the record, a quite remarkable one. Only one final he's not made. In a couple where he's not won, he's been absolutely amazing. But he was beaten in this tournament by one of our finalists here this evening, in Alex O'Donoghue. And just, quick, just go back to that result, really, Simon. It was quite a remarkable performance from Alex, considering how well Jordan played in round one. We very much expected a little bit more of the same in round two against Alex. And I just don't think Alex would let him settle ever into that match. And Jordan didn't play his best ball, no question about it, but I feel like some of that has to, has to do with his opponent. Yeah, Alex sort of put him under the pressure, didn't he? We, we, I, I don't know what it was like for everyone else, but for me watching the match, it just felt like Alex went two sets to one down, having lost the third set, and you thought, okay, you know, Jordan's just going to go into his normal shootout, kind of shootout king mode, and he was going to wrap the match up, but... Alex didn't allow him to. Alex played some great pool and just there was only one winner in the end, the way they played in the final two sets. It was it was all to do with the way Alex played and that really shows how he's played in all three of his matches to get to this stage. He's had another good break here. Pretty decent split. Let's have a look at this lie. I don't think he has to move anything, it just needs to be precise. And this could be the shot that opens everything up. Gaps. It's all nicely worked out here from Alex. Broken dish his previous break. Perfect position to follow that with another here. It's a small sample size so far tonight, but it does show how he's not allowing pressure from his opponents affect the way he's playing. I think you can say the same for both players. They're very much playing their own game out there. And they're both playing pretty well. Really has been a high standard tonight so far in our Super Series final. Another breaking dish for Alex O'Donoghue, 2-1. Pretty even on the stats as well. Apart from really, the one thing that stands out there, the one thing that jumps out, is the total frames won. Gareth a few frames ahead on that occasion. You see that. Total balls potted indicates that Alex has had a couple of chances to arrest that scoreline of touch. The missed pops. Oh, what's cost him? One of those two missed pops was that black into the centre pocket to make it 3-2 in the opening set, and that's the biggest moment in this match so far. Gareth played brilliantly in the opening set, but Alex was oh, there Gareth, with him break. until that black. Every break that Alex hasn't made a ball or he's hasn't potted the white. Gareth has cleaned up. Speaking of potting the white, he's absolutely murdered that break. <laughs> he's cued that so hard, but he's cued it badly, straight into the middle pocket. Just didn't catch that front ball clean, just off to the side. White flies into the centre pocket, and this is Alex's opportunity. Got a free visit just to open things up and he's not played it well that's disappointing alex scratches his head he knows that was a poor shot i think all he was trying to do there was bounce that yellow onto the side cushion get it out of the way open up the table for the reds and what he's managed to do is tie up the black 
So a cannon required. It's a pretty controllable cannon. This is the pot. And that is so avoidable. He'll be fuming. You can see he is. In a strange way, that black that he missed in the opening set that we've been talking about, this is as bad, if not worse, than that shot. He had his time on his free shot. He didn't take much time over it. He had plenty of time to line up what he wanted to do. I just feel some players sometimes are guilty of not treating the free shot with as much respect as it sometimes deserves. It can, it can really make or break a frame, as we've seen there, just like any other shot. Alex is more focused on get those two out of the way, then we can deal with the break. And just not quite sure he put as much TLC into that shot as he ought to have. That's because you're not trying to... I think in that situation, he's not trying to pot a ball. He's just sort of saying, I'm just going to bounce it off the top cushion and float it somewhere onto the top side cushion. And you haven't been precise about what you're trying to do, and then it goes wrong. The only thing that's gone in his favour is he's tied the red at the top of the table up. And that was... Gareth's opportunity to develop it and it's not work so Gareth is now odds against making this finish so it's not all over for Alex in this frame yeah this was the big chance he was close to that wouldn't he even a thin contact contact on that yellow would have given him a pretty good chance of moving that red into a possible position that is a tough pot Taking it to the corner to try and get an angle to go up to the red and yellow at the top of the table. It catches the jaw so the white doesn't travel in that area as well. If you are going to miss, then that's probably as good a miss as you can have in terms of the way you leave the table for your opponent. Yeah, yellows now are pretty tough as well. This has become all of a sudden a, a bit of a bitty frame. That's a very clever shot if you get a little bit more pace on it. To, to take the pocket really there with that yellow it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out I think Gareth I think there's some mileage in Gareth coming off the cushion and playing into the red or he might even be able to see it straight just to get that red in the open you would be turning the table over to Alex with an opportunity but there are a couple of balls at the bottom that don't go That's sort of what he's done 15 second shot clock now in operation in the second half of this second set. Gareth has said, right then Alex, over to you. If you clear it, fair enough. But if you don't, it's my frame. It's a great first shot. That's brilliant. That's a frame winner. He still has to put the final touches to this, but that yellow goes at the top of the table. And this opens up two yellows at the bottom of the table. There's two problem balls opened up in one great shot. Oh, Alex. Alex, hard work done, and then you miss the next pot. He will not believe that he has not walked away with this frame. Two unbelievable opportunities. Just think the red over the pocket was factoring into his mind a bit there. I think he's tried to pinch pinch the pocket a little bit to make sure. Made it a worse miss than it looked. Might be being overly generous, I'm not sure. But either way, Alex O'Donoghue will be furious he's missed that. I don't think he, I think you're quite right. I don't think he had the full pocket. But he had other options and I think he could have gone a different way if he wasn't comfortable potting that. So I'm sure it went comfortably enough for him. It's just a poor miss. Gareth Ibbett is not in the mood to Frank. allow such mistakes to go unpunished. We're all square in our second set. Two apiece. The money matches yesterday, Simon, were fantastic entertainment. Shootout showdown, Paul on Monday nights for the foreseeable on Free Sports and we have another one lined up for you next Monday. Second one, TBA, but Don Cooney takes on Drew Hughes, £2,000. Next Monday, Drew Hughes versus Don Cooney, that is a fantastic matchup. Drew a 
current IPA professional, and Tom's got a great reputation in the pool world. It should be a fascinating matchup. There's Alex's next break, and it's come out a little bit awkward for him. It's not the easiest ride. He's got a little bit of work to do. Go straight after a little bit of it. May look to try and take this to the top corner. No, just playing a containing shot. Just wonder where we could get to the potting angle for the top left. See the shot here from Alex as Gareth plays a similar shot, just resting that red up against the jaw of this bottom pocket. It's a tricky lie for both players. Well, you've seen a, a slower start to this frame. 15 second shot clock is unforgiving, however, and makes safety battles tough. You do not have long to respond to your opponent. Will Gareth be tempted? He only has one bad ball on the table. He has an angle to go into it now if he wants to. No, he's going to stay away from it. He doesn't want to be straight on this front at the bottom. He's got just a little bit of angle. He's rested right on the bottom cushion with the, with the white ball here. Don't think he can create enough angle to develop anything, so it's just going to be another containing shot. Alex could play a containing shot with the yellow at the top of the table, but he's not going to gain much of an advantage from up there. He's just sort of hanging on so far. So you can understand that shot choice, trying to get the yellow in amongst those reds near the centre pocket. is not far away from taking this on. Ball's not in a great position when he wants to go for it to try and develop that bad ball. Just feel Alex potted that just to shut the shot clock up a little bit. I think you're right. <laughs> just give himself an extra 15 seconds to come up with his next shot. And it is just a safety. He's trying to hang on in this frame for as long as possible. It really is still difficult for, for Gareth here. He doesn't. None of the four balls in the open, near the pockets, give him an opportunity. He's hit cushion and he has. They don't give him an opportunity to, to play that developing shot on the red to the right, near the right hand side. So he can't be aggressive. He can't go for it until he understands or works out how he's going to develop that ball. It's going to give Alex some time potentially to get back in the frame. If I'm Gareth, I want to try and get a red across the table. Maybe the one he's nearest to. Can he double that across to the other side? Okay, he just tries to open things up a little bit. That was a slightly riskier choice of shot. But he played it at a pace where he wasn't really going to develop the yellows in any way. So, nicely played. took that on with an aim to get both of those reds out of this corner pocket. He did half a job. Corner pocket is still tied up as you can see, but he can now take it. Alex O'Donnell here in doing so takes advantage in this frame. Let's turn the tables. Gareth Hibbert's advantage has gone. He got an angle here off this red to the centre without that jaw. That's unfortunate. Can't play a similar shot to Alex in terms of that red won't go into the right hand pocket. So he's just trying to cover up the pocket this time I think. Just wonder if Gareth does can play on this ready. He can try and double it. It's not 
out of the question. I just wonder if he now feels he's in such a position that he's forced to go for this finish. Well, he played that at potting weight, whereas I thought he might just try and cover the pocket with the shot. So maybe he did feel like he could land on the red. But he's nudged it safer. Possibly just rest this red on top of the yellow, make Alex have to develop it. Alex, he may just be able to get enough of this yellow that he could play the yellow full and just stun the white on and off the cushion and leave it resting on the red. Alex would be in all sorts of trouble. Well, he's gone the other way, he just made sure he got it in the open. He's still not leaving any reds on. This has been some safety battle, considering it's been played at 15 seconds a shot. Both players' minds whirring into overdrive. Garrett taking the skill shot on. Which just shows, I think, how serious a position he felt he was in. I mean, if he'd have made this, which he so nearly did, it would have been one of the shots of the tournament. It would have been one of the best shots I've ever seen if he makes the skill shot there. That was... I mean, it shows you how much trouble he'd worked himself or Alex had worked him into, the fact that he's willing to take on that skill shot. From hampered queuing, almost a chi well, a full Chinese snooker. To, even if you take that ball he was bridging over away, that's a skill shot that he's not going to make very often. And then you put the... I mean, I think he can hit that shot a hundred times and not make it. He probably won't get closer again. Well, a big frame in this set, make no mistake about that, at 2-2. It's been a great frame for Alex to win, and Gareth is going to concede it. He'd rather have some time on the clock. So we do have a second shootout showdown match for you next Monday. This one also for 2,000 Griffins, Carl Brown against Zach Shepard players that know what it's like to play in this arena. Both players played in this shootout series. Frame six, to break, three frames, two lost in the first six. round. Another fascinating matchup though. Plenty of drama in our first two money matches. What will we get next week? Poor players are just a superstitious bunch, aren't they? Gath has been breaking really, really well in some ways, but he's had a little bit of Misfortune with the last couple of breaks, and he's gone straight to the cut break. This could be a four ball plant to start. It is. What a shot. What a shot that is. What a shot that is. If this yellow passes those two reds, he's almost home free. It doesn't. You can see that from the overhead there. He has got a little bit of work to do to land on that on the left side of the table. He's got the balls to be able to do so. Yeah, there's room as well. But it, it looked messy, didn't it? It looked horrible. It looked like, well, oh, he's going to have to work hard to have a chance here. One shot, and all of a sudden, it, it looks so much easier. That's a remarkable shot. To have the vision to see that is, is one thing, the execution the other. I'm not sure what's more impressive, honestly. Either or. This is perfect for Gareth because he's still left plenty of time on the clock here. With Alex breaking next, that's exactly what he needed. Because he will assume, as he should, that Alex can break and dish. Frank. If Alex does that, there's still time for Gareth to respond. Frame one, three, three. And this is where we talked about this match clock. Now it becomes a bit more important. There'll be about three minutes left here. That is plenty of time for one frame, maybe even time for two. If Alex doesn't make a ball off this next break, though, Simon, Gareth will be licking his lips at the opportunity. Anything can happen from this situation. First thing Alex wants to do is make a ball and give himself that opportunity to win the set. But yeah, it could go, uh, you know, we couldn't see a tight set here as well. There really is a lot that can happen in the last couple of minutes of this set. Yeah, absolutely. Big break this for Alex O'Donoghue. Maybe the biggest in the match so far. Cues it well. Does he make a ball? He does not. Now then, Gareth Hibbert with the opportunity. How's the split? How's the lie for him? If he can find a red, he'll be pretty happy. There's only really one red to work out. Yellows aren't really a chance. Oh, can he find a red? What a shot. <laughs> How 
on earth has he seen that? I mean, he had one second left on the clock when he played that as well. He was in a rush. Uh, he's actually been unfortunate. He hasn't landed on his next red, so he's still got a real problem. Left centre pocket, don't worry about it. Oh, he misses it. The way he's been potting everything that he sees, you backed him. But now the table flips over to Alex O'Donoghue. Two minute warning. I think Alex is saying this is going to be the final frame. But I don't think he's covered that pocket. This might be on for Gareth. Depends whether he can get to the potting angle of the red just to the left of the black. If he can, in a couple of shots time, then absolutely. Although that will not help. He was trying to get a cannon on that red and yellow and he's gone through the gap. Although he holds his hand up, so I suspect he's got a shot or he can see a shot. No, just waving his arm around in frustration. Looks like a, a tied set is on the cards now. Just having a look at the table as Alex played that shot. He had half a chance on yellows there if he could have made a ball. Everything apart from the black actually had a pocket. Would have been tight on the clock, but he had enough time. Gareth can find a way to be on this red to the top left. He also has a shout. 40 seconds. This is not over yet. Requires a few very, very good shots. 30 seconds on the watch. He's not rushing himself. He's taking his time. Taking one by the black first. Oh, he didn't get into it. Just quit on the shot, just a fraction. He wanted the white to come up an inch further up the table. He can still clip this back, but with three shots left to play, I cannot see him making the clearance. some pop mind he's gonna come up maybe two seconds short wow brilliant drama at the end of the second set it is halved after the second set and it is still all to play for third set coming up next Well, welcome back to the Super Series here on Free Sports. This is what we've just witnessed at the end of the last set. Could Gareth Hibbert have completed this, Simon? He came pretty close. I just wonder whether he felt he had more time than he did. You can see him just chopping and changing what he wants to do. He's not really rushing at this point. He, had, he came to the table with just about enough time to make the clearance. And he only when he plays his next shot and he hears the beeps coming in for the end of the set does he realise that he has to get on with it. And I actually do think he, he didn't just lost a little bit of where he was in terms of set clock. You see, now he's realised and it's too late. Yeah, an interesting one. I personally initially thought that when he was taking his time, he, he almost thought as if he didn't really have a chance to make the clearance. So he was almost slow playing it to take Third the tie. Set. But Gareth as we can see, it, it was very much on. It wouldn't be like Gareth Hibbert not to back himself to make any sort of clearance the way he's playing at the moment. It's a fascinating final so far, Simon. We've got one and a half points for... Oh, wow, go on, break! Oh, wow. Oh, 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 the final that keeps on giving for Gareth Hibbert. Golden break, 1-0 in the third set. Wow, that's incredible. What a start to this set. And Gareth has had a few. Gareth's had more golden breaks than anybody else in the tournament. Amazing. And two in his first round match. It's absolutely remarkable. Don Irvin starts again with the re-rack. That is one way to start the third set. Really interesting final now, Simon, with where this one lies. We could, could, in theory, go to all the way to a decide. Now we've had one set that's been halved. Big, big next set you feel for Alex, though, in particular. Yeah, he feels he needs to get something out of it, at, at least the draw. He, it, ideally, he wants to win it, level the playing field up going into the final two sets. But if he gets a half out of it, then at least he's still fighting for the match. If he loses it, then it's a tough road back. Sure is. Well, Gareth with a golden break. Alex with a dry one. He's 
been a little fortunate, I think, with how he's left this table, because it's a really good split. But Gareth's first shot is not obvious. He's back to the 30-second shot clock, so he's got a little bit of time. Can he squeeze through to this yellow? He can, but I have a feeling he was playing that with a bit of side. Don't think he could fully see the potting angle. He missed it thin, so possibly couldn't quite see enough of it. with a chance to recover after the dry break. Accepted pole position, he was dead straight. If he can drop this in dead weight, then he'd have the plant next. And that again would open things up. That's a tough shot to take on into these middle pockets. This is much more open for Gareth. Frustration, as you can see from Alex O'Donoghue. Just in the way the bottom half of his body looks as it walks around the table to go back to his seat. You can tell he's frustrated. Yeah, the slowness of the walk, the frustration was still there to see. I wouldn't say great chance for Gareth, but it is a chance. Yeah, these reds need some working out. On the right side of the table is where his issue lies. I think the bottom one may go to the middle pocket if he gets right behind it. That's not necessarily easy to do. So he goes for the cannon. And that, I think, has come out really nice. Both balls now go much more comfortably. I think he'll be pleased with that. Still also got an issue on the left side of the table with the reds in the middle, but it's better than what it was. He needed to pot that one thick to keep the white off the, where he needed it. He's just forced it in, it wiped its feet upon entry. He hasn't yet in this visit got hold of the white and put it where exactly where he needs it to be for a chance. This time, he has. He can play this red off the yellow, delicately. He's having a look at having to cannon the black out as well. I just wonder whether his thoughts were, if he lands on the red to the right centre last ball, whether he can just roll through in his gap. You can see he's having a look now. Is there a gap through to the potting angle of the black? It doesn't look like it from our cameras, but just the way he was looking. No, he's left the angle to play the cannon. Wonder, I mean, ideally, he'd like to leave the white where the yellow underneath the red is, closest to it. This is the shot that decides the frame. It's exactly what he's played. It's a great shot. I tell you what, this has been a really, really tricky clearance and full credit to Gareth Hibbert here. That is really, really top level stuff. And it's 2 0. We had the golden break in the first frame of the set, and the second one required some real top quality pull. That was right up there, one of the best finishes he's taken out in the match. That had to work so hard, work that one through all the way. Every single shot until all the black was, was tough. We see our tournament so far. We've seen some absolutely fantastic games. What has been your favourite match of the tournament, Simon, would you say? Oh, that's a tough one. There's been so many good matches. There's been some brilliant performances from Gareth, from Mark Farnsworth, from Jordan Shepherd. I think that set from Sean Storey will live long in the memory when we turn the set round. 4-1 behind with eight and a half minutes to go. That was probably my favourite moment in the in the tournament so far. A lot of sentences there that almost constitute an answer to the question. I was hoping you'd have. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I think actually my my favourite match, pound for pound, is probably one between Gareth Hibbert and John McAllister. I think John will thank me necessarily for saying that, but. 
standard that those two put on between them was really, really quality stuff. Gareth played it such a high level throughout. And John, for much of the opening to the match, absolutely equaled him. And it was a bit of a clinic in the end from Gareth Hibbert, but the early stages of that match were much closer than the scoreboard suggests. It's my personal favourite, but as you quite rightly did say, that there is a lot of a lot of choice. I can't argue with your your choice though. That was a brilliant match and just an exhibition of of Paul from Gareth, but the fact that he did it against John McAllister, the current world champion, and the way John started just added to to the quality of what Gareth did. Again, a slightly fiddly clearance. He wanted to be straight. If he's straight on this yellow, then it all works itself out because if he can land straight on the yellow to the bottom right corner, he just drops it in, the white goes through the gap for the yellow by the black. Now he has an angle where he can't do that. The white is going too low down the table, so can he come on and off the top cushion? Can he maybe play into the yellow? He's on and off the top cushion, but now he's left too much angle. The difference it made being an inch high up the table there to being straight. When <laughs> Those are the margins. It, that it really is. Mad and a pool player. Yeah. If he's straight, he backs himself to clear up 10 times out of 10. Okay, he's still with a cue, a nice one down the rail. But um, being a, an inch short, he goes, I wouldn't say second favourite for the clearance, but it becomes long odds. Oh, he deserved to be on it. The pot's terrific. And he's in a three inch window where it's end of break. I'm not seeing your eyeing up here. Oh, he's trying to, he's playing this into the cushion with side. You couldn't go, you couldn't go with a natural angle. Go for the natural angle, then he has to be very close to the black and he can't then get to the potting angle of the yellow. So by going lower down the table with side, if he hits the yellow full ball, at least he thinks he's going to make it. Now Alex becomes a massive favourite in this frame. Those are the margins. We mentioned it just before Gareth took that double on. Fine lines that are so frustrating in this game for so many of the top players. Just the precision you need. When you're watching the top players play, you think they just keep getting easy run outs and easy run outs because they land so nicely all the time. And it's not that easy to do. And when the players are on pr under pressure out there, you have to be an inch out of position, and all of a sudden that finish gets incredibly difficult. It's come at a good time for Alex O'Donoghue, though, that's for sure. If he goes 3 0 down in this set, staring two and a half to a half in the face having to win the last two sets just to take it to a tie break. Taking these out nicely. One thing I'd like to say is I'm just delighted that both players have really turned up and given us a great final so far. Both players playing really well. I think both, both of the semi-finals were almost a little bit after the Lord Mayor's show for a couple of the players, they played so well in rounds before, they got a little bit scrappy, a little bit tough, they had to grind it out, but this has been a really high quality affair. And Gareth looking to return to where he once was in terms of form. He'll be pleased with his run at the World Championships. John McAllister wants to win the title, but he'll be disappointed with the other results on that list. He expects more of himself. Former number one player, former world champion, a player that's used to winning tournaments on the IPA Tour, tournaments all around the world. Disappointing that the silverware has dried up a little bit in the last few years. Really good break. 
break from Alex Donoghue. Probably his best break of the match. Black's the hardest ball on the table. The rest of the layout is pretty good. Although, if reds are his choice, he doesn't have a, a good first ball. I think he's going to have to take yellows. I don't think he'll mind that necessarily. It wasn't really a bad colour set on the table there, I didn't think. And I think in taking yellows, he's going to end up clearing the bottom corner for the black. It's the one big advantage of yellows. I think even though he was forced into yellows, I think yellows would have been his choice, as you say. It means he'll want to get rid of the one below the black as early as possible. It's not ideal to leave it for his last ball unless he's intending on playing the black into the centre pocket off the red. The red is a little bit low for that for comfort, although the shot is on. Gareth kind of played something similar in one of the early frames. It would be slightly easier than Gareth's. So he's looked to try and work an angle where he can pop this yellow to the bottom left corner and go into the black. He catches it full ball. Stay on the yellow to the corner, the black will come out and it should be routine. If he double kisses it, things could just get awkward. He yeah, needs to get his angles right here. And in fact, he left the angle where he couldn't actually go into it, which is still okay. Still has to finish on. black down the rail though he could be hampered by the red which will just make things a lot harder so the position is everything on this shot just about pulled up in time so that he isn't hampered by that red that's about as good as he could have got so square things up in our third set shot What a visit to the table that was for Alex O'Donoghue. Really building on the visit. The counter clearance on the previous frame. Excellent breaking dish. And we are all square in this third set. Gareth Woodett backed himself with the chance he had at 2-0 to go 3-0 ahead. See Donna rushing the balls up, having a shirt dedicated to a friend who had passed away recently. Tony Levens, the person in the poor world, still walk for England, English Paul, unfortunately lost her battle with cancer this week. Thoughts go out to her friends and family. Got a nice touch from Donna with her shirt. a lot of thought into her colour choices. We've seen that throughout this competition. Orange laces to match the orange shirt. And a, a nice tribute as well. You can never accuse her of being colour coordinated, that is for sure. <laughs> Transition to the 15 seconds, can always catch the players out. Both players spoke of that earlier on in their interviews. They've generally handled the shot clock pretty well. The one exception, I think being at the end of the last set where Gareth just, I think, lost track of the match clock ever so slightly. Yeah, the match clock, not the shot clock. That's the bit that he lost track of, I think. It'd be fascinating to find out whether he wins or loses after this match, whether that was the case. Not perfect on this black. Wanted Dwight 
good couple of inches further up the table. As Black still goes, but it's missable. It is indeed missable. And you hear the sigh there from Garrett Tibbet. It's the first show of emotion we've seen from him all night. He's frustrated at that one because he knows he was an inch away from retaking the lead in this set. And now, I mean, this is a gimme of a clearance for Alex O'Donoghue. The only problem balls he has on the table, and they're not really problem balls, he has just a lovely little pattern to work them out. that just draws itself really doesn't it just getting himself a little bit unstuck he wanted to be straight on that red so he could run through for the yellow at the top of the table drop it in then he's got the one over the center pocket Tr tried to get on that twice and both times he finished slightly awkward so now he's working hard again see there he's remonstrating with himself he wasn't happy with what he'd left but that is an absolutely a plus recovery from Alex O'Donoghue well if he was frustrated and he, he showed us that he was he didn't let it affect his next shot because that was brilliant he made it slightly heavy work Goal there in the end. Lovely work from Alex O'Donoghue. Another frame down. 3 2. Is his recent tournament history. And it's mentioned a few times with different players throughout this competition. And often, Paul here on Free Sports. Alex having some tough, tough early tournament matches by nature of his current seeding on the tour. Yeah, Neil Rayburn in the opening round of the World Championships, Thanks. cheers. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> one thing it doesn't say there, he had to qualify in the World Championships, so he has to win a few matches at, to get through to that stage. But yeah, you look at the names on that list and they're all high, high quality players. And it's tough when you're a, an amateur or as he now has turned a lower ranked professional, get tough draws early. And the standard and the depth in the poor world is huge. And there'd have been certainly an element of Neil Rayburn thinking there, oh, what a draw to get the <laughs> first yeah. round match as well. Yeah, it, go, it works both ways, that. You know, there's far better draws out there for, for the players that Alex had to play, that's for certain. And Mark Farnsworth rejoined the tour after taking a break from the game and one of the greats of the game, and he's coming in as an unranked professional. He's, I think, he's playing, you know, I remember playing him playing Gareth Hibbert and when Gareth Hibbert was seeded number one in, in first round of a tournament, you're thinking there's two of the best players in the world right now in the first round. It's just what we will see a lot of in the poor world over the next couple of years. As some of the players make their way through the game and turn professional. Alex in again here. He's got a great chance, really good chance to go 4-2 go one from home in this third set with plenty of time left on the set clock this set has really flown on by helped of course by that golden break Ooh, now then that is not how we wanted that to turn out needed to slide by this he was just just the wrong angle on that had to pinch a bit more of the pocket oh that's a nice shot though that's a really nice shot yeah, a little touch of the table from Gareth to acknowledge that. Got both reds in motion and the white and was able to work out how it was going to pan out so that he could leave it as awkward as possible for Gareth. And Gareth needs this to drop or he's leaving a chance. what you have to do when you run out of position it's not always having to come up with a massive shot or just slam the balls around the table and hope for some good fortune a very well considered safety shot from Alex and he earns a second opportunity and I was 
about to say a simple black to take it out, but it's not as simple as he wanted it to be. He's taking it to the middle, and there it goes. Brilliant from Alex O'Donoghue, 4-2. Eight and a half minutes remaining in this set. It's the highlights of Gareth Ibbett's last few years. Plenty of final appearances there, as well as quite a few semi-finals as well. Yeah, Gareth will look at that with some frustration. There's no titles. The one final he did win was a Premier League qualifier, so he went on to play in the Premier League. The, the other two finals he made, he lost. And when he looks back at his career on the IPA Tour, you know, he's got a lot of silverware in the cupboard, just not enough in the last couple of years by his standards and by, you know, what he would have wanted. Oh, no, I don't believe it. <laughs> no. Two in the same set. Oh, Gareth Hibbert has the good grace to look a little bit sheepish there. <laughs> oh, absolutely amazing. You have to feel for, for Alex O'Donoghue in that situation, though. You know, two golden breaks in this set. The fact that he's still ahead in this set just tells you an awful lot about Alex. But, yeah, I mean, Alex has done so well to get himself up in, in front in this set. He's thinking, OK, a couple of frames here, just want to get an opportunity, a chance, and then he has to go and watch another golden break. Absolutely incredible stuff. Well, Alex does have the next break, of course, and a chance for Alex to go and win the set. That's how he must approach it. He can't really let that affect him too much. Kareth has played two shots for two frames in this set. Go figure, absolutely remarkable. Alex O'Donoghue just wants to make a ball, give himself a chance to win this set. He's been the better player in it. And it's come up dry, would you believe it? Is Gareth Hibbert about to make this set get very, very interesting? You can never, ever feel safe in shootout pool. It's a, such a brilliant format. It really is. It is so cruel at times as well. You've ne you're never out of it. You've always just got. You just anything can happen out there. Alex would have been thinking, "Great, hard work. You know, I've really worked hard to get myself in front in this set from two 0 behind." And all of a sudden, a golden break and a dry break, and it was looking difficult for him again. Although Gareth hasn't made the most of that opportunity. No, he ran out of position after his first shot. Caught it too thin into the middle pocket. He went for the three-ball plant, and he's in off. Shake of the head from Alex O'Donoghue. And Gareth Hibbert, laser-like focus on the table here. This is a great chance to tie things up and to take us to a deciding frame. Clever shot. Every yellow has a pocket. Apart from the yellow in the middle of the table. I don't think that goes. I think it goes to the bottom right now that other yellow's out of the way. I think it should be alright here. The way he's played that shot, now just that yellow, I'm almost certain goes. So yeah, this is a great opportunity to tie things up. Once again, a couple of minutes on the clock in set number two and it was all square. We could be in the same situation here in set number three. Funny old game, isn't it? It really is. For Alex O'Donoghue, he can do nothing but sit and watch and wonder. And it will go to a decider. Who has the break in that decider? Mr. Golden Break. Can he get three golden breaks in a set? That would be very rude, wouldn't it? Well, it's for all. We will go to a decider. This is Alex O'Donoghue's highlights. Finally, the English amateur against David McNamara. 
who we also saw a couple of times in this tournament. They're really going to count on himself. Did Dave. But as we mentioned earlier, not much recent action for Alex. Did take a wee break from the game. He's working his way back into the tour. And there's later positions. Two times a World Championship quarter finalist. Watch the black. It was close. It was on the move again. What well, Alex will be thinking here, justice. A chance. A chance, that's all he wanted. It really is. It's not a brilliant chance. A little bit of work to do, but it's not, there isn't really any bad clusters on the table. It is more about just trying to find the pattern and work it out. But there are a couple of problem areas that you have to land nicely. Don't think he's landed nicely off his first ball, which will annoy him. That was a relatively controllable shot. It's not a bad, bad recovery from Alex. Had no choice. The reds were, were absolutely the way. The yellows at the bottom of the table were, were not nice. But reds were, were awkward. The ones by the black are a problem. The one on the left-hand side was also a problem. The one he's just moved was also a problem. But if he can get a second opportunity, things will be a little bit easier. And he will get a second opportunity. Gareth had precious little to play there. He's frustrated and he's annoyed, but it's not too bad. He's still in this visit. I think he's going to play one more safety. He's just tried to work out whether he has enough time for another safety. I'm assuming there are no yellows that go in the right centre pocket from where the white is, because he was always going to be leaving that on. A quick look at the match clock, and he is probably just about right. There is time for this safety battle to go on for another shot, maybe two, before the clearance has to be taken on if he wants to win the set. And that's there for him. Perfect angle to develop the black. Problem is, if he does try to develop the black and he sticks on it, he will have no shot. So he might be best off leaving it where it is. Exactly what he's done. There's three reds go. He's got plenty of time. Shot clock will help him out here. He's got four shots to play and a minute to play them. So he doesn't need to worry about the match clock. Just make these four balls. next ball he's angry with himself that reaction tells you he isn't and so close he is total snooker is about to be called and that may well mean well, he's, he's still not out the woods here he still might have a chance to give himself at least some sort of shot of his next red if he can make this off the cushion oh shots alex well then has he got the time has he got the ability to make these final two? That's one hell of a shot. Oh, That's oh, wow. one hell of a shot. And this would be a fitting crescendo. Oh, he's jawed it. And the set will be halved for the second set in a row. What an effort. What an effort. But it's Gareth Hibbert who still leads in the Super Series final. Back to the Super Series pool here on Free Sports. A dramatic end to the set once again. Some fantastic pull from Alex O'Donoghue to give this a really good go. Ran out of position right here. How well does he do to even get as close as he did, Simon? It's brilliant to give himself a shot at the black from here. He snookered. Okay, I expected him to make this one off one cushion. It's a big target. He actually makes it off two. But this next shot, it's so difficult. I was actually, I couldn't really work out where he was thinking about playing this. As we have another look from above of the, the double, but to play that off the yellow, which is the only way he could stay on the black as well, was just great vision and great control. And then this was for the set. 
So close. Great effort from Alex O'Donoghue. Just brilliant. Really, really was. And we've now had two halved sets. It really, really is so tight in this final, Simon. That first set from Gareth where he, was, he came steaming out of the blocks now could be really, really crucial in this one. Yeah, it's looking big at the moment, although there is still two potential sets left in this match. Alex could still get himself back into this match and still walk away as the victor. Absolutely, it's a great opening break. Did this at the start of the last set as well. Almost, almost by way of showing his frustration with how the last set went. It is 2-1. Alex has won a set without winning a set. And it, he'll be, he'll be, he won't believe that he hasn't won that last set when you consider that Gareth had two golden breaks as well. Alex played a brilliant set of ball there. He really did. And he did not walk away with a victory in it. That's just incredible, really. Yeah, he, was, he was the better player in the last set for sure. I think you could argue Gareth probably deserved the second. Alex definitely deserved the third. I'd agree with that. firing in our fourth set here. Two sets left. Alex can, of course, still win this outright. He's by no means just competing for a tie break. If he'd have told him you're going to play three sets, you're not going to win one, but you can still have a shot at winning the, the title. It was 2-1 first two matches and was able to turn that around yeah. match against Mark Farnsworth in the semi-final he was one and a half one and a half and three one behind with Mark playing his best ball of the match and he came up with a the goods there a couple of great finishes to turn that set around he's played his best ball at this stage of every match so far that he's played so can he do it one more time and get the title Going the right way about it. 4 0 in a little over two minutes. Beautifully done. It's been a great final, this. Really, really has been such a good match so far. Next Monday on Free Sports, we have more pool for you. The shootout showdowns continue. We saw some magnificent action in these yesterday. Don Feeney takes on Drew Hughes in our first encounter for £2,000. And a great second game as well. In the offing. Gareth still favouring the cut break. Black is on the move again towards that corner pocket. He really is getting that black moving now. He's not made a ball, and that's that's been the real dis the difference in Gareth's breaks. When he has cut broke, you often get a split like this, where it's a little bit congested in the middle of the table. When he was breaking front on. He was getting some massive splits all across the full range of the table. This has been a familiar story in the last couple of sets. I always find it, or almost find it, frustrating when I watch a player like Gareth. He's got one of the most powerful breaks I've ever seen in Paul. And he, he walks away from it to the cut break because he's not happy with the way it's working out for him on this, you know, tonight. And as a player, I'm there going, if I had your break, I would, I would never not go for that front ball break because it is such a, a massive weapon. This cut break game isn't bad, mind. Well, the golden <laughs> breaks help, doesn't it? <laughs> One in two frames. Absolutely amazing. That's what keeps this format so on edge, never able to relax as a player. Uh, glanced at his breaking stats, 12 breaks, only five of them as he made a ball, other than the two golden breaks, of course. So it's not a great percentage for somebody that, that breaks as well as Gareth. You can see why he's changed his break up. 
the thing is, it wasn't necessarily for any rhyme or reason. Most of the brakes that he was hitting front on, he was hitting pretty well. Just wasn't quite getting the luck of the brake, as it were. Just cued that really well, Alex. I'm going to be straight on it. And his reaction tells me he might be very close to that. He's still going to have a chance, but this shot that he's going to have to leave himself into the left centre pocket is very difficult. We have seen all tournament long, we've been on about these middle pockets all tournament long. They play very tight. It's just one of the dynamics of these black ball tables. It is a beautiful table. But you have to be precise in the centre pockets. This is tough. Off the bottom jaw it comes. It's not necessarily the end of the world because he's left it hanging over a pocket and tied up just about every single one of Gareth's balls in the process. But Gareth should be able to lay a pretty decent snooker here. He went for the skill shot instead. And that's also worked out pretty well for him. It's great vision to realise what was going to happen to be able to play that skill shot. Confidence in the pot and then great vision to get the skill shot. If he plays the snooker, he's giving Alex an opportunity to get out of the snooker and, and still win the frame. Because if he'd hit the red, it would have potted it and he would have been on the black. So probably the right choice to be aggressive. He could play safe now. Now the red's out the way. He does. And good luck. He's looking three cushions. You, ideally, you'd love to try and find this off one or two cushions. The one cushion's out. I think the yellow in the middle of the table is stopping the two cushions, so possibly three. And the reason I say two cushions, not three, is you want to get the black going up the table towards the pocket. He's not going to be able to do that. He just wants to hit it. And he wasn't able to do so. I was surprised. That was a tough snooker. You make Gareth absolutely odds on to win this frame from here. Black looks simple enough, close to the corner pocket. You just want to make sure that you drift up nicely behind it. You won't want to be playing it from any real distance because then you you could end up missing it. I suspect he's planning to leave the yellow over the left centre pocket as his last ball. It's the obvious ball just to drift up nicely behind the black. The closer we get towards the end of this match, the more and more that gets put on every single shot. Both players have played so, so well. And it feels like every mistake has been punished. There's not been many occasions where there's been a trading off mistakes. Both players have really made the other pay. And the closer we get to the finish, the more and more they are going to become prevalent. Great clearance from Gareth Hibbert. Played that beautifully. They sure are treating us, these two. As we see the stats. Pretty even when you look through the, the stats, just the, the golden breaks a big highlight for Gareth. His break isn't working particularly well aside from that. Alex is working a little bit better, but he still had his problems. Similar level of missed pots, similar level of fouls, similar level of dishes from the break. It's a very even contest, just the scoreline is in Gareth's favour. This break has been pretty reliable tonight. 
Been pretty consistent. You saw there from the stats that was the case. A little messy here. I think ideally reds would be the easier colour set to work out. I think the two yellows above the black would be a real problem if he goes yellows. So reds it is. Doesn't need to move anything with reds, that's the key. Doesn't want to be straight. Does not want to be straight. Has he got he only needs to get himself a couple of inches off the cushion to be able to pop this the next ball to the right centre and get back into the middle of the table, which is where he needs to be. If he has to leave himself on the cushion, then his next positional shot's going to be very tough and he probably has to play a cannon into the yellow. He can just get himself far enough away from the cushion where he can just raise the butt of the cue and get into the white. The problem he's got, and he's still got the grimace on his face, which tells you he's still fighting hard in this visit. If he goes too far with his next shot, then his, the next shot after that's going to come very tough. He needs to land straight on the red to the bottom right-hand corner. Not easy to do. I wonder if he's going to try and get to the bottom half of the table instead and play the plant. I think that's what he was trying. Well, he's on it. It's not a bad effort, considering all the factors that he had to weigh up. He's now just looking at the potting angle. This will open everything up. Beautifully plays. He's still going to have to work on this next visit as well, this next shot as well. He can't just drop this in and be on the black. He could maybe play the red off the yellow and then you just play the drop in. Yeah, I think that's what he's looking at. I was wondering whether he would go the other way and play into the black. That wouldn't be guaranteed. Nicely done. Beautiful work. Really well worked out finish. Yeah, that was tricky. It really wasn't easy at all. Yeah, so Donahue goes 2-1 up. Some really high tariff clearances here, Simon. It, it's felt like a final because of the standard of play. They're really treating us, these two. Yeah, it's been fascinating. And I, I've been gripped. I've been gripped all the way through the tournament. There's something about this event. It's really, you know, captured um, the imagination for not just myself, everyone watching at home. It's been absolutely brilliant. And, well, we've still got potentially another set and a half to go. Maybe more. Maybe more. Do not factor that one out as well. Your prediction may yet still ring true, Mr. Will. It's, it's a big frame, that, for, for Alex to win. You just feel if he is to get himself on top in this match, he has to win this next set. It's, it's such a big one for him, uh, especially with the way the last one ended. He's got to give everything to it. Putting it speaking of giving everything to it, <laughs> Gareth has returned to the front break. And this is exactly what I'm talking about. If you can hit the brake like that with your front ball break, break, why would you ever go away from it? The power he generates through the pack is, is brilliant. Red's the selection. There, time for the cue ball. I would suggest a little bit of frustration in that break. It does seem odd to say the person breaking with two golden breaks is frustrated with the way the break's going, but that <laughs> is the case. Oh, you're absolutely right. And of course, if Gareth wins this set, he wins the match. But at the minute, you just feel he's a little bit behind. Alex at the moment. Alex looks the more informed player, the more in rhythm player at present. Still on this red. A little bit more angle than is ideal, I think. Not sure if the red to the left of the yellow will go into the left centre if he can land on it, or whether he has to play for it into the top pocket. That's a great shot. That's 
a really, really good shot. You have just too much angle to play that on and off the cushion. Slides by the red nicely enough. He can play on this red to the top pocket now. It goes to the bottom right corner as well. And you have the angle to land on it in that pocket. 15 second shot clock. Now in use. Gareth Hibbert going to tie things back up. His first break and dish for a little while. As he returns to the front break with a vengeance. Next week on Free Sports Shootout Showdown matches between Don Cooney and Drew Hughes. First up, 2,000 quid. And then for the same price pot, Kyle Brown takes on Zach Shepard. Two really good games there. And as we say, some amazing matches last night to whet the appetite for those showdown matches. If you don't want to watch the next one after watching last night, so not sure what more I can do to advertise it. If they're half as good as they were last night, then we're in for an absolute treat once again. That is an absolutely amazing break from Alex O'Donnell here. Look how nicely this has come out. I think this is the best split of the whole match. Yeah. Pick a colour set and go. You could have chosen either, really. He's going to have one positional shot to play. He needs to land somewhere near the black, between the two reds. The red to the centre pocket and the red to the opposite corner pocket. Possibly off this next shot. He's gone just too far. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, if he lands right between the two reds, then it is absolutely routine for drop-ins. Now he has to work a little bit harder. It's easy to get on the red into the centre pocket, but it would be a trickier pot. Will he try and come round the table for the red to the corner? Play for into the centre, safe play. Yeah, decided not to play the, the more adventurous shot. But he got into that. He got into that all right. I think he's okay. It's a very thin black. Just Good want, job, really. I just wonder if the white's close to the top right-hand corner pocket. No, he's okay. Great black. Great that's, visit. That's a great clearance from Alex O'Donnell here. You know, he's back to the wall in this match now. And he is fighting with absolutely everything. He's playing as well in this set as he did in the last. As he has done in the tournament, he seems to save his best for the second half of matches. And that is a good trait to have if he can get it. Would he prefer not to chase everything? Probably. But at this stage of the match, he'll be delighted to be playing well. He's playing very well. Three straight breaking finishes for him and for Gareth as well. So that both players are playing well at this point in the match. In the front break from Gareth again. Again, a lot of movement, but is he going to come up dry again? I think he is. He is. Now then, Alex O'Donoghue, big, big chance. Takes the plant to start. Red right onto yellow goes yellows. Well, the only yellow he can, well, you can see two yellows. Can he pop the one he's nearest to? He's having a look. It's tricky. He can just about get to the potting angle. No, just the safety shot, but he's given away the foul. One free shot, one visit. Time running. Time I don't think he had the time to process that option, yeah. you know. I agree. 15 seconds just isn't enough time when you land in that sort of position you have to work out your options and what you can do that is not ideal for Gareth Hibbert I 
think the red to the bottom right-hand corner has been blocked by the yellow. He might have half a pocket. Well, he must have because he's taken it on. Oh, it was tight. Just feathered the yellow on the way through. It's oh. getting tense out there. It sure is. You just feel it, can't you? Even without a crowd, even without all the natural sharp intakes of breath from surrounding supporters. You can just see a couple of really small, really small errors creeping in. That, that right there is a tiny positional error, but it's having big impacts. What a recovery. Great pot. He still hasn't fully recovered the situation in terms of he hasn't landed nicely on his next ball, but at least he gets to play the next shot. Taking this to the top corner, white to the bottom cushion. Hey, it's not a bad effort, you know. It's not going to reach. Just wonder whether he's left this cut back, and I think the overhead tells us that he has on this red. So a chance now for Gareth Hibbert. Oh, where's the black? Oh, it just stays on the table. <laughs> Wow, that was close. He's got form for Nick in that black in. Into the middle pocket when no one else is expecting it. This time it would have hurt him though. Shot. The best cannon. It's a horrible cannon, yeah, you're right. Red, does it go past the yellow to the bottom right corner? He's having a look. Does the red still go after this pot? It's tight. No. And even Gareth Hibbert's premium potting game can't get him out of danger on that occasion. Both players here are feeling the pinch. This is such a big frame for either player to win. It is, and uh, it's the way the balls have just come out is making it tricky. The players are coming to the table with these chances, but the chances are horrible. This is the first one in the whole frame where the player will come to the table and expect to make the clearance. This, these are now there for Alex. It's the white to bounce. Another couple of rolls. He's okay. He can come on and off the cushion. Just screw into the side cushion. Played that beautifully. Doesn't have to worry about the black. Gareth has made that a gimme for him. Doesn't want to snooker himself, but doesn't allow that to even enter his brain. And Gareth Hibbert concedes it. Every second counts. It's 4 2 to Alex O'Donoghue. And it will break next, having broken cleared in the previous three frames. What would he give for that again? Oh, it's been such a good match. See there the runs between both these players. Both their tricky runs to this final. They really have. Gareth Hibbert jumping out Chris Day in his first match. World champion in the quarter. The inform Sean Story in the semi. We've spoken already about Alex's run to this final. He's hit that break really well. He's been kicked in off. Would you believe it? When he's broken dry, the only thing that makes that worse is he's gone in off. And he's, un he's so unlucky. That is so unlucky. Can't legislate for that. You can't, and there's something about Alex being 4-2 up in a set. Previous set, he was 4-2 up. He had to sit there and watch uh, Gareth get the golden break this time. It's punishment on his side of the table. And if Gareth makes the clearance, it'll be the same result. And he will have a break to tie things up. If we get that far, he has to go through these first. But you'd say, com certainly in comparison to the last frame, this is a much more routine clearance. Hasn't tied the black up there, it still goes to the bottom right. Might still go to the centre as well, definitely to the bottom right. He's red to wide open. Has 
chance to play the plant now. He's played these so well all match long. Never in doubt. I just wonder if he's just off straight the wrong side, making it really tricky to land on the nice, look, nicely on the last red. Yeah, he was, but that's an excellent positional shot. He could drop this in and accept a difficult black, or he could go in and out of bulk. He's going to drop it in. No need to play around with those yellows. Back himself to make this black. Gareth Hibbert will back himself to make any pot on this table. That's part of what makes him the player he is. Clutch, clutch black ball from Gareth Hibbert. 4-3, Gareth to break next. He'll have four minutes with which to work. We could well go all the way to another decider. This is action. Constant, constant action. Brilliant final so far. Just gripping, isn't it? Look how close every single set has been, bar the first. And the first was only separated by a couple of missed pots. It was all it took for that scoreline. Gareth was lethal in that first set, didn't miss a thing. Time running. Since then, it has got really, really even. It's been a great game. Need a ball. Isn't going to get one. And Alex O'Donoghue has the chance to take us to a decider. A decider set, I should point out, not a deciding frame. A winning frame here would take us to the break. Take us to two apiece. Moving into a final set showdown. He can forget the match or the set clock. It's irrelevant for him in this situation. If he missed, there'd be enough time for a clearance from Gareth. There's plenty of time for him to make a clearance of his own. So all that matters here is picking out his pattern. All the reds go. The black's got a pocket as well. In fact, the black's got four pockets. So this is all in his own hands. Decided red nearest the black will be his last ball. Oh, he had to nick that one off in time. You can see it forced him just to miscue it. It's never easy, is it? It's never easy. Well, just when he wanted a fraction of angle either side just to make it routine, he, and it finishes absolutely straight and had to pinch the pocket. And then that's tough. Oh, oh just wipes its feet, but it drops. It drops the drama weight and may well be over now. As long as the natural angle is missing that yellow on the bottom cushion, he can just play this comfortable pace around two cushions. He allowed himself a little wry smile there, Alex. He made a little bit of heavy weather of that clearance. We go to a deciding set in the Super Series final. It is all square with everything to play for when we come back. Welcome back to the Super Series final. Gareth Hibbert against Alex O'Donoghue. We are going to a deciding set. It is all to play for. What a fantastic final so far as we see Gareth turn to the cut break, Simon. That's interesting in and of itself. He's had some success with it once again. At this stage in the match, who do you make the favourite? That's a tough one to call. I think for me, the one thing I've, I've been so impressed with Alex all throughout this event is the way that he stepped up at the back end of matches and this is another match where he's stepped it up. He's played the best ball in the last two sets and if he can continue that momentum, I'd make him favourite but it won't take much for Gareth to turn that round. Yeah, it's not as if Gareth has been categorically outplayed in any way. It's been, it, they've been close. The last three sets have been level, level and won by a deciding frame. It's been... Fantastic entertainment all the way through. Two players playing very close to the top of their game. 
lovely little flick. Just moved it away from the cushion to make it into the centre pocket. A certainty. Still has to work out that one by the black. I think a little cannon, a little soft cannon onto the black. I don't think he can leave it where it is. He won't be able to get to the potting angle. So he's going to do that possibly now. May play into the red. Depends what angle he has. He played into the red and that's okay. I think he'd be pretty happy with that actually. Red goes to the top left. And get on it from one of the balls in the middle of the table. He'd have preferred if it went to the top right as well. So he'll be happy that it goes. It's difficult to land nicely on his next ball actually. The one over the right centre is a, a simple pot. I just wonder if he stuns this in. Can he play the other red into the opposite middle off the yellow? Well, he didn't look at it, so maybe not. Now he's got this red to the bottom right corner, but the positional side of the shot is difficult. Yeah, that red may have gone as we look from the overhead off that yellow into the opposite centre, so he could have just dropped it in. It's not something he saw. Well, he's played the positional shot beautifully, but he's George the pot. First blink in our final set is Gareth Hibbert. A great opportunity here for Alex to clean up and take the lead in the decider. And take the lead for the first time in the match. Four clearances from the break in the previous set shows that Alex really is playing his best ball at this moment. I think both players have played beautifully. Yeah, it's impossible in this format, and we've seen a couple of guys come close to doing it throughout the event to, to play flawless, Paul, but you're always going to get mistakes in a final, but also in this format, the, there's so much pressure out there with the, the match clock, the set clock. The shot clock's so short, you can't recover situations when you run slightly awkward, so you're always going to get those moments of of mistakes. You could argue this is a mini one from Alex. He sort of left himself in a little bit of no man's land with the white here. He's still fine. Just do a little bit more work than he would have liked. Black's just awkward. You can see him having a look now to see whether he can get to a potting angle if he just leaves the white somewhere near his last yellow in the middle of the table. And it will be tight. You can see from this camera angle here, there's not too much room to work with on the black. He's just going to stun this in. Had a couple of really good looks at this. Just shows how tight this will be. Well then, this is it for the first frame of the deciding set. It's a tough shot. Brilliant, brilliant shot that. So well worked out for Alex. Didn't panic. He finished slightly out of position, just reworked it, got himself back into a nice position and a good black to finish. And mistake punished in the opening frame of this set. And for the first time in the match, Alex O'Donoghue takes the lead. And interestingly, okay, those total frames won. That's not a great surprise. It really isn't. It has been so even. Big surprise, I suppose, looking at the stats, this has been the inconsistency of Gareth's break. Alex's, by contrast, has been pretty good. Not necessarily known for his break, but I mean, may well be, may well be after that one. Wow. That's a hammer. That is a hammer. Flying in from everywhere. How many has he made? One, two, three. Has he made three or four? That's brilliant. Five left of each colour set. That's four balls off the break. Cheers. <laughs> yeah. 
That'll get you going in a frame. Actually, considering you've made four balls, it's actually a very congested table. He would have expected more having made that many balls. Well, it is interesting. There are players that would rather have one ball off the break than make two, three or four, believing that having more balls on the table will give them more opportunity, if there are problems, to work them out. Nice, that's a really good shot. I don't think he's quite straight enough to be able to drop this in and, and put the white between the two yellows on the side cushion. I think he has too much angle for that. Maybe just straight enough, it's difficult. Yeah, he did have too much angle, so he's just accepted that he's going to have a really tough next shot have a really tough shot after that if he doesn't get the pace on this quite right he's going to have to go a couple of times across the table I think oh, and it doesn't drop this time it's Alex who blinks easy left on for Gareth though I don't think he's got a, a nice pot to go at coming around to see can he leave a snooker that would make it awkward for Alex if he can't he'll take this pot on down the rail when he's actually taken both on pot down the rail as well as playing the snooker and he's got the second part it's a really good shot Ted Smith calls. Just has to find a way to hit that yellow at the top of the table. He hits it, he's almost guaranteed to pot it, it'll be on the next yellow. Can he hit it? No. Well then, big, big chance for Gareth hit. Suspect he'll take, use his free shot, just pop the yellow over the pocket to come down the table. He may not, he's not one of the players that ever thinks about that sort of thing. He's normally just focuses on his own colour set and, and isn't really worried about where his opponent's balls are, but there's plenty of advantage on, on doing it on this occasion. More so because it gets you good position on your next ball. People playing at home in that situation, it's, you're doing it for a slightly different reason, that's just to take the pressure off your clearance, you're getting rid of the yellow that's over a pocket. If he was to come unstuck, miss the ball. You'd only have the yellow on the side rail, which is to Gareth's advantage. A percentage shot. At this stage in the match, Taking the percentage shot. May well be a moment of magic that wins this match. It may well be a mistake. It may well be consistently playing those percentages. It's 1 1. Both players with entries into both of our frames. Both players make counter clearances off the other's break. One apiece in our deciding set. This is coming up for you next on Free Sports in terms of pool. We return on Monday night, myself and Simon, in the shootout showdown. Don Cooney versus Drew Hughes, our opening gambit. Two K on the line between those two. He's gone back to the front ball break made a ball it's a little fortunate that the white doesn't go in off it I say a little fortunate because it would have been unlucky to go in off the way he hit it tried in one corner pocket then went for another <laughs> like it was zeroed wasn't it what's he looking at here Simon because it's, it's a 
tricky sort of table. It's a tough choice, this, between reds or yellows. Yeah, you can make a case for both, but he's going to go for reds. So, so one positional shot that he really needs to get right is getting the, the cue ball to the bottom left-hand part of the table for the two reds to the bottom right. If one of them goes to the... Well, if they go independently to the bottom left, it could help the situation. But every red has a pocket, including the black. Hardest ball on the table is the red that's furthest up the table. There's room to land on it to the top right. I think he wanted to be a, a roll further straight on this so that he could screw back for that red to the top right next. I just wonder whether it comes, does it go to the bottom left as well? In which case he can play on that now. And he was just able to, that was a really nicely controlled shot. That had plenty of angle on it, he really got into that nicely. That soft screw to land absolutely perfect. so far always oh, left himself a little bit not nice on this final part just had too much angle on that red dropped it in as dead weight as he could this is a tough cutback he has nailed it brilliant shot brilliant clearance from Gareth Ibert 2-1 as we approach halfway in this final deciding set. Our second game next Monday is between this pair, Carl Brown and Zach Shepard. Those two also playing a prize pot of 2,000 pounds. Our opening night in the money match in the shootout showdown was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. It's going to be fascinating to see how these matches go and how the the money match scene on free sports is received. It's a great break again from Alex. It's a really good break. He's breaking consistently well, and it, sometimes you don't always get the rewards for breaking well, but he is getting that, that pack to really ping open with just timing. There isn't the same power as Gareth, it's much more timing and the control of the white is now just coming straight up the middle of the table nearly every time. It's a very impressive exhibition of breaking from Alex. When you say timing, for those who aren't as au fait with their Q sports, Simon, what, what are you referring to there? Because everyone knows what you talk about when you talk about power. It's how, how hard you can swing the cue. Talk about timing a cue ball, what do you mean? So, so what Gareth's doing, he's going back and he's trying to hit it absolutely as hard as he can, almost raw power. What Alex is doing, he's just going with a, a nice, it's a powerful break, but it's not full power. So his acceleration, he's timing his acceleration through the cue ball at the perfect moment. So his cue, it, it looks like he's hardly hitting it at all, but he's actually still getting a lot of power through the pack. Doing it that way, you, you feel like you, keep, you can keep better control on the white easier. Very eloquently explained. 15 second, shot clock. 15 second shot clock is running. We're going to go to 2 2, I think. Barring a big miss. Two each. And we've got a maximum of five frames remaining in this final. If we don't quite get that far and we play four or two, this little spot here could come into play. You know, circle towards the middle of your picture. That is where the black ball shootout will take place from. 
white ball on that spot, black ball on the black spot. Sudden death pops. Yeah, days gone by, it was anywhere behind the line and it would be best of five, like a penalty shootout. Things have changed, it is now straight into sudden death. And it's straight away from an awkward position. Breaks dry, and this could be a big opening for Alex. Tough opening shot. Oh, and that's the worst possible outcome. A let off for Gareth. I was just thinking that that yellow has come off the cushion and gone really awkward against that black, and that was going to add some serious mileage to that frame as the white goes in off, which means. Gareth has the opportunity to open things up. Well, he was trying to open everything up and get that red going into the black and yellow. He doesn't get that side of the shot right, so there is still some mileage in this frame. He's going to take on yellows, white into the black. Oh, he's missed it. Really awkward queuing under time pressure. Has he got away with it? It's no easy shot here. For Alex, this red is tight. It's the middle pocket. Oh, cued it really well. Excellent shot. Chance is now there for him. Black doesn't go to the bottom right hand corner, so back end of the finish is going to be difficult. Reds at the top of the table aren't too bad. He would love an extra roll on the cue ball on that occasion just to make this pot to the bottom left on. Now he has to take on the plant to the top right and it's tough from distance. Played it well, but again, he's reaching a bit on this finish. Just that previous shot, if he could have come through the gap of the black and red and landed nicely, I'd fancy him to make the clearance. Landing where he did, he was chasing. Another twist in this frame. How many more will there be before the night is out here? That is a shot and a half from Gareth Hibbert. It's just brilliant. That is just absolutely brilliant. What a shot that is. Goodness it me. Shows he's still queuing really nicely. Put that there and leave the white ball exactly where he wanted to is proper high level stuff. Needs another good bit of queuing. There you go. This is not the easiest finish, this at all. I was just trying to work the pattern through to see when he could play the yellow in the top part of the table. And he's gone straight away up for it, but he's missed the pot to the corner. Well, his saving grace is the white stays up. And his other saving grace is the bottom of the table is now very tied up for not just Alex's red, but also the black. This is not a gimme of a clearance for Alex. It's a very canny opening shot. How does he sort this problem down the bottom of the table? It has to be the skill shot. The yellow is in the perfect position for a skill shot. He wants to leave the red near the black as his last ball. He would like love to be just high on it like, and I mean just high so he's just off straight to make the skill shot really easy and he can just stun behind the black he hasn't landed nicely on his penultimate red though which means getting to that position is going to be tough this into the center pocket with pace is tricky oh so good what a shot that is it's, it's as good as he could be that's a great great pop that but this is so tough I think to hit this flush. Oh, what a shot. Is he on the black? The black doesn't go. That's really unfortunate. I'm pretty certain the black doesn't go. Looking at the overhead. He deserves it. He too. does deserve to be on the black. That was excellent. Well, he's still taking it on, so maybe it does. 
It does. What a finish from Alex O'Donoghue. That skill shot, one of the shots of the tournament. In the circumstances in which he's pulled it off, absolutely amazing. What an amazing shot that was. So we started that visit with a, just a casual three ball plan. That's that big skill shot. Let's not forget about that incredible pot into the middle with position. That was one of the best four or five ball clearances we've had in the whole tournament. Under extreme pet pressure. That shot is no gimme. The next one is it's out of this world. Show you it in just a second again because it deserves a rewatch. And then breaks dry. Wouldn't you know it? And look at this split. Well, look at this shot first of all. Simon, just describe how difficult that shot is if you can. I felt that if he got right behind it, the ball was in the pocket far enough that you just you thought if you land nicely on that ball, you know, hand on the table just behind it, you would expect to make it as a player. When you play it from that distance from the cushion and you have to control the cannon, you, your focus is all over the place. And it is so difficult to be that precise at that pace at this stage. What an extraordinary shot. It's been an extraordinary game. Looks like he's going to be cannoning into the red. Not guaranteed to land nicely on his next yellow. But he has. That's a lovely shot. One more good positional shot required if he can land nicely on the red to the bottom right hand corner. The one on the outside nearest the cushion is ideal. nice and it wobbled but it was fine straight would have been perfect but he's still okay I think he's straight enough that he can just stun this in there is six and a half minutes remaining in this match we are about to barring an aberration from Gareth Hibbert that we haven't seen in this tournament go 3-3 three, three. cool as you like white's fine three all six minutes left how's your nerve sight oh, just when you think that that finish from Alex O'Donoghue will rattle Gareth Hibbert he comes up with a brilliant reverse dish of his own you just can't get your breath can you it's brilliant stuff from both players just high quality ball high quality drama this is such a good game. Fitting for such a quality tournament. To go the distance, it may well go the full distance, yeah. Frame seven, Gareth Hibbert's a break. Three frame four, five set. Time on eight. Shows you how competitive this tournament's been when you look at that list of results. He says there's only been two, three no score lines in the whole event. Back to the cut break. And it's going to come up dry. And with the way that the bottom of the table is shaped up here, this frame I don't think will be a quick one. Five minutes, which is just about what we've got on the clock, may not be enough for this frame. This is a horrible layout for both colour sets. Oh, it's horrible. It really is. got enough angle to get into the problem area it was he had just enough angle but you couldn't get the white going across with enough pace to really do any damage it's a great effort really can he squeeze this red into the bottom corner no as he fluked it no and he holds his hand up because that's actually worked out nicely enough for reds and for alex these yellows are still really horrible. No, no pot to go at, and the safety is difficult as well. Yeah, he's come up with smelling of roses there, Alex O'Donoghue, which I guess in a way he deserves after such a good positional shot to give himself half a chance at breaking open the bottom of the table. For a second, I wondered whether that was a three-ball plant to the bottom, but it isn't. If someone can find a way 
to win this frame, they will go very, very close to winning the Super Series. Less than four minutes remaining, and it's still a horrible table. If no one can find a way to win the frame, we go to a black ball decider. Oh, that's added mileage. That's added minutes to the frame. Yellow onto the red. Gareth's almost playing for the for the tie break now. He's losing the tactical battle, and he needs to even it up. And that shot has gone some way to doing so. The pace on that is so perfect. He's almost fouled. He's rested on the cushion with the last roll of the ball there. That's nice for Alex. That, that's actually really nice because he's now left it a three ball plant into the center pocket, unmissable. And it would open up his other red when he plays it. So if he can get back to the table with a pot on, he may have a chance to go for the match. Touching ball was called, so Gareth's trying to get behind these yellows off two cushions, and what he has hit it perfectly. That's brilliant, that really is. Oh, under the pressure these players are playing under. Doesn't yeah. have to hit another yellow, just has to hit a cushion to fulfil the, the legal shot requirement, because he was touching his ball. Frustration from Alex because it's a good hit, but he has just opened up the pocket for the yellow. Can Gareth find a pot? No, where's the white? Oh, oh it hangs. No. How has that stayed up? That, look at it, it's in the pocket. It the, hangs. The difference between that dropping and staying up is possibly this frame. Never mind the frame, the set, the match, the tournament. Unbelievable. This is Gareth Hibbert's opportunity to win the match. The yellow still goes to the bottom left. He has one yellow to develop, and he can do that with a yellow off the red into the centre pocket in a couple of shots time. Possibly this next shot. This really is a great opportunity here for Gareth Hibbert. He's got just about enough time to be relatively... And use that word carefully, comfortable. Doesn't have to worry too much about the match clock. He's got five reds in the back to play. Pretty much the full shot clock on each of those pots. Possibly felt the red was too low down the table to play a yellow off the red into the right center. So he still has to solve that problem area and time is now against him. Final minute of the Super Series. Gareth Hibbert has three yellows and a black to win the tournament. He's looking at playing the cannon off this yellow. This could win the tournament. What a shot that is! The confidence to take that shot on is outrageous. That 34 is... seconds, Gaz, get your cue out. That is such a tough pot to the corner. Still three shots to play. Gareth Hibbert running round the table. One black for the match. What a finale. And he's going to let the match clock just run down, settle the nerves. The heart must be pounding and Gareth Hibbert has done it. What a finish. That's one of the best shots I've ever seen to take that on in that moment. He's odds against making that pot and the cannon as well. If he gets that wrong, he loses the match. What an unbelievable shot and finish from Gareth Hibbert. Well, shoot out Paul, ladies and gentlemen. Shoot out Paul. Absolutely incredible drama. And we will speak to our Super Series champion, Gareth Hibbert, next. Welcome back. Some match that, wasn't it? Some match that. Simon, just before we speak to our Super Series champion, a word on that match. That was the match of the tournament and we saved the best all last. It really was the match of the tournament. That had absolutely everything. I was gripped from start to finish. We had no idea which way it was going up to the final, final second. Absolutely brilliant.
Everything that makes Shootout Pool so, so wonderful to watch. Now we're going to find out what it's like to play in. Gareth Hibbert, a huge, huge congratulations. Our Super Series champion. How do you feel? Because that, that, looked exa that was exhausting to watch, never mind playing. Unbelievable, Steve. Yeah, I'm glad it wasn't as warm as last time I was here because I think I'd be, uh, I think I'd be dead by now. <laughs> <laughs> Unreal. Yeah, I just he just kept coming back with dishes. He was he was breaking lovely, and I thought I'm going to get away. A few loose positional shots here and there, but it was it was unreal. It, the end of each set was just drama. Congratulations, Gareth. That was absolutely brilliant to, to watch and, and have me gripped all the way through. I thought you were brilliant. I thought both of you were brilliant. But I want to bring in the, the, the little clearance at the end there and, and that shot that you played. Uh, if you look behind you on the screen, it's for me, it's, this is one of the best shots I've ever seen. Well, when we get to it, it's one of the best shots I've ever seen in the circumstances of the situation. To me, this, this pot to the top left is so tough. Um, did you have any thoughts about not going for it or were you just all out? I just, I thought, can I play it, can I sort of take my time long enough that he won't have time to clear up if it doesn't work out, but he, he could easily knock them five balls in in 40 seconds, so I just, I don't know, it was uh, it was all or nothing really, he doesn't fancy the black ball shootout, so, <laughs> but it, when it came out, per well it wasn't actually perfect, it left me a little tricky one, but it was, it was lovely to see it go in. At, at that point, when broke into a run there, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, mate, yeah, got the old feet going, <laughs> and then a beautiful moment for you here is you got to take it in. You knew the hard work was yeah, done. Yeah, yeah. Just because he played so well, I didn't want to celebrate too much. But it's a nice feeling when you've got a black like that. You were in a similar situation in, in set number two, and you almost took a little bit too much time, and you weren't able to have enough time to make the clearance. Did you realise? Did you lose track of the set clock? I did. Stage? I did, Simon. Yeah, I was. I was watching the lads last night, and I think Matt Lawrenson did it, and I just totally lost. The last time I looked, it was sort of three or four minutes, and I thought, oh, we're plenty of time here. Whoever wins the frame's going to win it. But there seemed to be quite a lot of dishes early in, in sets, but they, they were sort of two all at 15 minutes. It, they were always a little bit tricky to get to the five. It was an incredible match, Gareth. It, 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 you played absolutely fantastically well. So did your opponent as well. That was It took two to tango in that final. A, a word for Alex O'Donoghue, very much gave it everything. Oh, he played superbly, yeah. He, just, he was just breaking lovely. He was taking all his chances. There was the odd mistake, obviously, because the, the shot clock and the situation and the, the size of the match, how big a game it is, it's, there's going to be some mistakes, but there was a hell of a lot of good play as well. What is it about the, the golden break? You had a couple more golden breaks tonight. I know the break wasn't particularly your friend all the way through, but you've had the most golden breaks in the tournament. Yeah, yeah, just obviously I, I think I've got a good front ball break, but it wasn't quite working tonight. So when I do go to a cut break, I usually hit it pretty well and the black goes flying around. And I think two out of the first three or four, it, it flew in. But uh, yeah, the, a lot of the other breaks, if, even if it wasn't dry, there was, there was one or two issues here and there. It never, never felt easy, really. Well, we've talked about an amazing match, Gareth, but of course it does mean you are our Super Series champion. How much have you enjoyed, enjoyed this tournament? You have enjoyed some of it. How much have you enjoyed it? And, uh, and how much does it mean to you to be, to be able to come out the other end of it and say you are the winner? Oh, it's great. Just uh, a TV tournament like this when all your friends and family are watching and uh, just loads of pool public are watching. It, it's just great to play well in a final. And it's, it's been an awesomely run tournament. And I just have to thank the lads who've organised it and Free Sports and, and you guys here and uh, Viv that's brought me to every match and let me let me relax in the car on the way and have a couple of drinks later on. And uh, yeah, it's been good. And, and my sponsors as well. Well, I think you've earned a couple of drinks after this one, mate. Go enjoy them. Congratulations, Gareth Hibbert, our Super Series winner. Cheers, thank you. Wow. What more can you say, Simon? That was an, an absolutely incredible match. And we, we've talked a lot about Gareth Hibbert there, but what I want to do before we get back to him is talk a little bit about Alex O'Donoghue because it did take two to make such a brilliant match. In a way, it deserved a black ball decider, but I'm delighted that it was won by a moment of magic at the end. Yeah, I am pleased with the way that it was won rather than it being you know, lost off a mistake, if you like. But I, I really feel for Alex. He's, he's such a good lad and he's been, if it wasn't for that brilliant finish at the end we'd be talking about Alex O'Donoghue being the player of the tournament and, and potentially winning the trophy he was that good tonight it, the, the more pressure he was put on the, under by Gareth Hibbert the better he played and for me that that clearance at the end aside he was the best player in the match for the second half of it but Gareth Hibbert has found a way to win yeah, that was the end of the second set, which we talked to Gareth about, where he just lost track of the set clock. Could have been very different, having watched it. Here's the, here's the golden break go in. Taking you very much by surprise, as well as everyone at home, and I'm sure Gareth himself as well. 
There was some brilliant pull throughout. Here's another one going in. <laughs> <laughs> It's very easy to forget those co those cameras are on us, Simon, isn't it? Yeah, I won't thank the director for that one, but yeah, no, two golden breaks, and that was a big moment in the match as well for Alex O'Donoghue with, you know, what was that, four seconds left on the clock. That was for the set, and he wasn't able to, to make it drop. But Alex played some absolutely unbelievable pull in the match. He really did. He stepped up. He made a lot of clearances from the break. There's always going to be mistakes in the match, but it's how you respond to those mistakes. And he did so well. And I am so pleased that Alex played as well as he did. It's just disappointing that, well, this is going to, well, that shot that he's just played highlights how well Alex played. Uh, but there has to be a winner and there has to be a loser. And on this occasion, this unbelievable shot that Gareth Hibbert's about to play in the circumstances it is the difference between the two players. Yeah, this shot here is, in the circumstances, one of the best shots you'll see. Absolutely amazing. And it almost, at that point, I think Gareth started to believe that it was on. But this is a horrible shot down the rail. Had to give it the time it deserved. Once he'd got that out of the way, then he can maybe run around the table to get the other one in. But what a feeling it must be after playing those three shots to then have a shot he could probably play blindfolded to, to win the tournament. He, that must be the sweetest feeling as a player. Blindfolded, one-handed, he couldn't miss that. You know, he could play that a million times, he'd, he'd never miss it on the black. But the shot for me that won in that match, and I said it's one of the best shots I've ever seen, because the reason I'm saying that, as much as it was a pot with a fairly natural cannon, if he misses that pot and it is so tough, he loses the tournament. Everything was riding on that one shot, and he knew it as well. He said that in interview. That just tells me how good a shot it was. Absolutely amazing. The last two nights on Free Sports have seen drama unconfined. It's been absolutely magnificent and it continues next Monday night with our shootout showdown. The two uh, matches last night, Patty McCarran and Matt Lawrenson and Martin McIntosh and Steve Smart gave us such drama. Will Dom Cooney and Drew Hughes live up to that? They compete for £2,000 live on Monday from 7 o'clock and following them will be Kyle Brown and Zach Shepard for the same £2,000 prize pot. Well, just before we exit the Super Series tournament, Simon, your final words on it. This has been a tournament that's given us not only a way to enjoy pool during lockdown, which about two months ago was a, a real blessing, but as the lockdown restrictions have eased and we've started to get more into it and the flow started to return to a regular sort of tournament style, it's given us so many fantastic moments of sport and I, I've absolutely loved it. I've loved every minute of it. A word goes out for all the all the people involved and the organisers, especially for free sports who have been part of this journey of, of Paul throughout the last couple of years and they were so keen to get Paul on the on the TV as soon as lockdown allowed and um, the format that was come up with this set, set format with the shootout rules just allowed for drama non-stop throughout the whole event and I've loved every minute of it. Well, we can't wait to do it again sometime, but do join us on Monday as the shootout, shared, shootout showdowns continue on Free Sports every Monday through the month of August. Me and Simon, we'll see you then. But from the Super Series, congratulations to Gareth Hibbert. Good night. This program is brought to you by Town Billiards.